Today, we are going to be taking a step back and looking at my old elementary school papers. After the end of every single school year, my parents would make me take all the papers from that year and put it in these Ziploc bags. So as soon as I came home from college because of the summer break, I looked everywhere in my house for these papers and I found them in my closet. And it's just like a mess of these papers, right? There's like, there's so many of them. And reading through some of those stories again made me reminisce the time of when Life was simpler, you know? Like, all I had to do was like, go to school, play Pokemon. And now I'm like 20, and I have like all this adulting shit to do. Anyways, we're actually gonna start with my fifth grade papers here and work our way down. I feel like the younger I get, the more unhinged it gets. So you can like kind of see the progression as I become more mentally unstable. Oh, this is a, this is a nice introduction. Anyways, Family by Tulio Sasayo. Creative, small, talented, and athletic. A child of <laughs> who loves family and branches, who feels proud, happy, boss, and smart, who needs friends, family, teachers, and a world to live in, who fears, <laughs> who fears atom bombs, pie, and spiders, who gives joy, fear, and atom bombs, <laughs> who'd like to see family, Brazil, and Japan, student of almost everyone, great worker in speed skating, silence, Tulio Sasayo. I think at the time, I had this intense fear of the atomic bomb because we just finished like watching a documentary on Hiroshima. I also had an intense fear of pi. Like, not like the pie that you eat, but like the 3.141592. Because my brother made a thing out of memorizing as many digits of pi as he could. Anyways, we have another paper here for us to look at. People have people who they look up to. If it is a musician, celebrity, or sports player, they are all really great. <laughs> the person I like or look up to is a Brazilian soccer player named Neymar. He is no ordinary soccer player. He plays in the FIFA World Championships. This person keeps trying no matter what. Even after he broke his spine in the... And then I, I just stopped writing there. So some context for this, most of my family actually lives in Brazil. And on occasions we would visit and we would watch like the soccer games. I'm not a big sports person, but this is interesting to look back at. If you don't stand up for yourself, you won't even have a chance for achieving your goal. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what goals I had at this time. I had a, like an obsession in elementary school of like being the fastest person in elementary school, like it was such a flex for me to like run faster than everyone. I don't know why I'm telling you this. This, oh my god. Oh, this. We'll we'll save uh, this one for the end. This one is uh, this one is quite. <laughs> this one is quite traumatic. I'll admit there weren't that many interesting things from fifth grade. I think I'm a bit more developed at that age. So let's move on to fourth grade. Oh, I found a story of what makes me happy. I'm Tulio, and what makes me happy is going to roller skating class at... I go there every Saturday at 9.55 a.m. Roller skating at... makes me happy because my friends also go there, who are... Then Dakota. Dakota is actually a speed skater teacher who is 13 years old. He's also our teacher. I think I... I, I said teacher twice. Taiki is my brother, and he always comes with, with me. They start lessons at 10.15 a.m. What I usually have to work on is going backward. <laughs> My brother has to work on going forwards. When the lesson is about to finish, we play a game called the dice game. It's extremely fun. After we play that game, the lessons are over and open session starts. During other open sessions, there are other games. There's also the races. The races are my favorite part of going to I almost always win first place in the forwards race. Taiki almost always wins second place in the backwards race. Going to roller skate at is always fun and makes me happy. But yeah, I do think this still kind of applies to like today. Oh, would you look at that? There's, there, there's another one about roller skating. This one's called On the Ice. When I was about four years old, I always wanted to do something kind of sport that involves speed. Oh my, that is so hard to read. I decided that I want to become an Olympic speed skater so I can do something that involves speed and could make me famous. <laughs> a speed skater has many duties and responsibilities. The most important one is to find the right teacher, which means you might have to keep traveling to many different places to find a new one. The second thing is that you have to work really hard day by day so you can enter a competition. The third thing you have to do is work out at the gym every day so you can improve on strength and flexibility. I have the right personality <laughs> to be a speed skater. To begin with, I like taking challenges. When I was at my roller skating class, I decided to do three laps instead of one in one of the races. 
<laughs> I also have a lot of energy. I could roller skate 10 times around the roller skating rink non-stop. Finally, I am healthy. Speed skaters need to be healthy to compete. It takes a lot of hard work to become a speed skater, and if I work hard enough, I can become one and be famous. <laughs> Man, I was, I was like really obsessed with becoming famous. So much ambition, so much drive. Where did it all go? <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on to third grade. Let's start with this one. It's kind of like a autobiography, if you will. Titled, I Am by Tulio Sasaya. I am as fast as a running cheetah. I enjoy running, playing soccer, and DS. <laughs> life, family, and school are important to me. I ponder about running as fast as the speed of light, being rich, and having lots of metal. I love TV, video games, and soccer. I can climb trees, run fast, and am rich. <laughs> I will be rich, fast, and become famous. My ego was, um, it was really up there, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's look at this last part here and see if I accomplished anything. I will be rich, fast, and become famous. I definitely have not completed the first part of it, uh, the rich part of it. I also used to be in a speed skating team, but I, I was pretty mid, I'm being completely honest. <laughs> the last part, famous. I mean, with like Instagram and TikTok, I would consider myself to be like a mid-sized content creator. I'm definitely not famous. I feel like there's a difference between having a lot of followers on Instagram and being kind of like mainstream celebrity famous, but it's definitely a blessing to have a platform and an audience that's willing to listen to you. Oh, this one's interesting. Okay, so I think the prompt for this one is what I would do if I was a superhero and what kind of superhero I would be. If I was a superhero, I think I'd be called Super Two. <laughs> <laughs> One, my name is Tuyo Sasaya, and two, I have a cape that has STS. I don't know what that means. The cape has blue in it, and I like superheroes. <laughs> if I was a superhero, I could fly as fast as a jet, shoot electricity from my hands, and run light speed. If I had these powers, I could save anyone. Well, if I had these powers, I could also explore outer space to learn more about space. Then I would be rich. <laughs> If I was rich, I would buy a million dollar house. I could use my electricity bolt to power up power plants if there is a blackout. If you haven't noticed already, there's a, there's a certain theme here with me wanting to be rich and wanting to be fast and wanting to have the world revolve around me. Oh, and this is kind of like the superhero costume I made myself. Huh, that's funny. Oh, look at this. It's, this is like a kind of like a the New York Times knockoff. Oh my bad. It's actually called the Tulio Sasaya Times. Today, I went to the balloon festival to race. It started at 8 o'clock. You had to run one kilometer to win. I was seventh, but everyone won a gold medal and a shirt. <laughs> I was fun. <laughs> oh, the grammar. Oh, and here you can also uh, meet my hero. My dad is my hero because he found my lost tooth. And then um, I think that's just his drawing of my dad. <laughs> it's so nice looking back at these. If you stored these papers like I did, I highly recommend like after this video, just like take a read through of some of your old papers and just comment down like any old or funny stories you find. I think it'd be very, very interesting to look through some of those. Anyways, we're moving on to second grade. This is actually gonna be the last one because I don't have papers earlier from this. Thing is, I grew up in Florida and moved to Texas when I was like six or seven. So I don't think I have anything prior to that. Oh, this is like a, like a flip through it kind of thing. And it's titled Someday. Someday I will be a artist. Someday I will go back to Brazil. Someday I would have five gold medals. Someday I will learn Chinese. Someday I will be the fastest runner ever. Someday, I will go to Japan. Someday, I will go back to Florida. That was pretty straightforward. I don't know why I wanted to learn Chinese at the time. I'm glad that I did finally go to Japan though. That was, that was a trip I've been meaning to do for a while. And that first one, uh, someday I will be a artist. I guess I kind of did that. Like artist in the sense that I'm expressing myself through like this video. This one was a letter to my friend that I don't think I ever gave to him. Dear friend, I wish you had a play date with me. I have more than 500 Pokemon cards. I have a Pokepad and other funny games. My mom doesn't like you. <laughs> My mom doesn't like you because you cough, sneeze, and you are too crazy. <laughs> so be junior self-manage fast. Love to leave. You know what's crazy though? Like I'm still friends with this dude. Like I literally met up with him like a week or two ago. We were never that close or anything, but the fact that we're still like maintaining the friendship now to me is, to me is a, it's very nice. It's very nice. Before I get into the last paper that I've been holding back, I don't know, man, just like reading these old papers made me kind of like long for, you know, those simpler days. Like I used to live from a very idealistic perspective where just like the childhood dreams and hopes I had for the future, 
would turn out to be true. But I think as we age, we kind of lose that innocence when we're faced with like the harsh realities of this world. Anyways, this, uh, this last story is titled Bad Guy. This isn't the same paper from fifth grade, but it's, it's the same story. Once a bad guy came to my house a long time ago when I was four. It started when I was in my house in Brazil counting my money. <laughs> my mom was at the computer, then suddenly she saw a person walking with a flashlight in the backyard. Then she knew it was a bad guy. My mom called me to go to the pink bathroom. She got her computer and phone, then ran to the pink bathroom with me. I told my mom I was so scared. My mom hugged me, and then I was thinking what was going to happen when I was dead. My mom locked the door. She called her dad on the computer. I, uh, I don't have the rest of the story with me right now, but, but essentially what happened afterwards is, you know, we called the police and then 10 or 15 minutes later, we start hearing noises around the house and they eventually got to the door of our locked bathroom where we were in. And I remember my mom was asking them in a very like fearful tone if they were the intruder or if they were the thief. And I remember when they finally broke down the door, I opened my eyes and the first thing I see is like just guns like pointing at us. And that was, a uh, <laughs> that was something. Luckily, it's all past me now, but I think that's like the, the funny thing with nostalgia. I find that when we look back to the past, we often only focus on like the positive things that happen because those are the things that, you know, jump out at us the most and bring us the most comfort. And I don't think that nostalgia is necessarily bad or good. I feel like the only bad thing is indulging in it too much. I feel like 10 years from now or in the future, I would definitely like look back at memories like these fondly, where I was like in college, making friends, going through heartbreaks, pursuing my passions, chasing my dreams, you know, just like the process of figuring out my life, going through my 20s. So I think everything from here is just a good reminder to be in the present, focus on the now, rather than reminiscing too much about the past or worrying too much about the future. If we don't like just appreciate living and experiencing experiences, I feel like, I feel like life would just pass by much faster than you realize.